Hey friends, in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to create running totals in Power Query, but not just the regular ones. We're gonna look how to apply these on a group by group basis or category by category. It's an exciting episode, it's a difficult one, but you're gonna learn a lot and I'm sure you'll love it. For those who don't know me, my name is Rick. I run the blog BI Gorilla. And I wanna take you on a short journey on how you can use running totals in Power Query. It's a famous one for being very slow. And in my last video, you could see how you can make a very performing running total. And we'll pick up from there to see how you can use that logic and actually apply it on groups. If we're looking at my screen now, we're gonna start at where we ended last time. So if I look at the query right here, I'm looking at a running total created with list generate with all the benefits mentioned in my last video. If you missed it, make sure to check it out. So this logic is it has a starting table. I need to buffer my values. I have a list generate function and I attach them again together to have your original table with a separate running total column. This is the absolute fastest as I've made it so far. The next exciting part is how can we make sure that we can apply this to different groups? Because you might actually want to have a running total that resets for each change in a group. So on my screen here, my first group might be jeans. My second group might be involving the product skirts. And then we have socks. And for each of these, you might actually want to have a running total that runs until there and then restarts. So how can you do that? Well, the first step to do this is in, it involves creating a function from your logic. So we're going to look at that first. So with this logic here, we already know what this looks like. I'm going to duplicate it. And this is going to be the basis for our function called fx running total. We want all of this to be get parameters so we can actually call it and apply it to our table. And the best way to do that is to go to our advanced editor. And I'll zoom in a little bit here. So what we're looking at here is all the logic that we need. Now, how do you make this into a function? To make this into a function, we always start with parameters in the top. And if we create a function, let's imagine I'm a user. I'm a user that wants to create a running total. What do we need for this? Well, first of all, we're going to need a name. So I'm going to call this the RT name, running total name, as text. Somebody will just fill in a text value here. Our next parameter, it requires us to indicate the table where we want the running total. So I'll call this my table as a table. And lastly, we also need to indicate at which of the columns our values are. Perhaps your table has multiple values. So it's the amount column, but perhaps you have a discount, a net sales, gross sales. So we're going to need a column name here. So I'll write here um, RT column name. So we have an RT name, running total name, and a running total column name as text. Now to create your function, you write the equal and then the bigger than sign after. It's a little funky, but this indicates that the parameters are before this sign and the rest of the logic is after the sign. Okay, and now we're gonna go through the logic of what we need to adjust. Our function starts at line three here, saying that our source table is called sales. Now we're gonna already have something here. So it's gonna be called my table. This is the table name people will have to give in. My table. Parameter my table. Oh, that's a nice pop-up. Okay, what is the next step? In my next step, I wanna find all the values in that table for my running total. And instead of having to retrieve those values again and again, I'm telling Power Query to keep it in memory with list buffer. So this part here indicates which of the columns contains our uh, our values. Now, ideally, we would do something like this and say, I want to look at my table, and within that table, I want to have the RT column name. Now, I can tell you that's not going to work. I tried it before. Unfortunately, this formatting is wrong. But if you make functions, you still need to be able to refer to these items. So, what can you do? So, instead of referencing this directly, there is a function in Power Query called table column. And you can use that instead. So writing table column, the first argument is the table where you want to find the column, which is called my table, as we as in a, add in a parameter. The second argument is the text value with the name. Now, as input, we already require text. So all that we need is the RT column name. That's it. 
we close our parentheses and this is our argument and this is fine the table column actually refers the values in a column as a list and that's exactly what the list buffer function needs so we're good to go here okay then we're going to generate the running total based on this list we don't need to change anything here because this part was already referencing the buff values all that we need okay we continue then the next step here uh, first of all it grabs our original table which is source that's up there nothing needs to be changed then it grabs the values from the running total step also that will remain the same there's just one thing that we might want to change the second argument of table to columns um, or table from columns here it requires us to also indicate the column name so we can change this one instead of hard coded and just write the rt column name uh, no, I'm wrong here. We call this the RT name. This is the name of our column. Perfect. Now, I think we have gotten each of the steps already, but we can test it later. So with these adjustments, if you click OK, you'll find several things. First of all, we now have an FX running total function on the left. Whereas the previous queries looked with a table icon, this one shows FX as if it's a function. And now it also has all these items here. And we can make documentation, but for now, we're just gonna go with the example. Let's say we have this sales query here. How can we make use of this FX running total function? Well, what you could do is you could make a new step here. And by default, when you create a new step, this is the, ar the argument in the formula bar just refers to the previous step here, which is a table. So we start with the sorted rows table as shown. Now, if we write here, what we can do is use fx running total. And the first step on a running total function is the running total name. So let's be obvious and just call our new column a running total. Then we go to the next argument. The next argument is the table you want to create a running total for. Now, it's referring to the sorted row step right here. But it's good to be aware that this step is actually a table. So we can leave it right here and say we're going to make a running total besides this table. And the value to make a running total on is called, uh, is within a column called amount. So here you can write amount. And basically that's the three arguments that we looked for. So let's have a look if this works. If you click on the side or on the confirm button here, this is what happened. So if we have a look at a previous step, we just had a table which was sorted in the way that we wanted to. And now if I click OK, you'll find that we have 16. Ooh, that was wrong. We'll have uh, 16. And then we have 25, which is the sum of these. 51, which is the sum of these three. 86. So the only thing we have done now, and that's what we wanted, was we made a function that does our running total for us. Step number one. This is working. OK. Now we get to our next step, because we still want to be able to do this on different groups. So how can you achieve that? Let's have a look. So I'm going to delete this. This worked, but it's not what I want to do right now. Okay. So with this data set, let's say we want to create a running total by group here. Okay. Oh, I just uh, sorted this in the wrong way. I deleted it again. There we go. So if I want to have a look on how to do this by group, I can first group my data. Click on the product, click group by. This automatically groups it on the product column. And what I then want to do is use the all rows function, which will give me all of the summarized rows in a table object. There we go. Now each of these table objects here contains the rows that had the data. So if I click next to it, you'll find that these are the rows that were for genes. And if I click next to the skirts one, you'll find this. You will probably see a preview, but I'm having this bug in Power BI, which makes me zoom in now. But normally, if you click on the side, it actually gives you a preview. Okay, so far, so good. Now, we want to create a running total for each of these. And one way to do it is the following. We could go to a custom column. And we could write again, fx running total. 
Our column is called running total. And now for a table name, our table is in the details column. So you can write details and then also give a name to the value column, which was called amount. This is the column name with the values that is in this table object. Now I click OK. And just by doing this, I'm already getting a running total. This is the preview. So I'm already getting a running total here. It's in here. So as a separate step, I have it. Let's see what happens. So I already created it. I'm going to remove, well, not this one. I'm going to remove everything else. What if I expand all of this and I say, OK. Actually, you have your running total. So our first running total is for genes, is a running total that runs until right there. 14 is one of the running totals that resets because it's a new a, a new column, actually, a new category. So we start with 14, and then the running total goes until here. Okay, so far so good, and then sucks. So this is great. This is getting to where we want to be. But there's one thing that we lost right here, and we don't want that. If you now look at the, if we go back to the sorted rows, as you can tell, we had column types here. The data types of these columns were set. Now, after doing all these steps, we lose our data types. Now, we only have a few columns right here, but imagine you have a table with maybe 50 or 60 of these. You don't actually want to get bothered and have to restore all the data types, but we can fix this as well. Okay, what do we do? We go back. And we go to the group row step. Here we go. I'm going to make some spaces here, add this to a new line. Perfect. Now, what we did previously, previously we added a custom column and we applied our function on each of the table objects here. That didn't work out. But what we can also do is apply our function right away before even doing anything, uh, but before going to an add column step. Um, if you look at your table group function, there is this little part here, each underscore. And what that means is that for each of the, the products that has been grouped, it will generate a table object with the summarized rows. So this part here, those are the summarized rows. Now you can also think of this as that this underscore represents a table. And that's going to be the key for our solution. So what you can do is instead of doing only the underscore, you're going to edit the code and write fx or running total, open bracket, and you remember the first argument was the name of our running total column. I'll call it running total. You write a comma. The second argument within our function was the table. We can leave it as an underscore. And the third argument is the name of the values column that we want to make the running total on. So we call this amount and we close the brackets. Okay, so basically the argument is the same, except that we now have this function running against it. If I click OK, nothing changes. But if I now look at the preview of this table here, I can click on it and you'll see that the running total is right there. Okay, that's good. Now, the exciting part is, see if we still have our data types, but you're going to first run into another problem. If you open the, the brackets here, you're going to find that it only show three different columns. Whereas when we just look at the preview, we actually saw four different columns here. The running total was there. But for some reason, we're not able to select it right here. Now, the reason for that is Power Query has a good look on what kind of tables uh, are in the column. And we have indicated that we have a table that has a column date, product, and amount. And it also indicates the data types. So if we want that running total to be able to expand, there's one slight adjustment you need to do. So our column is called running total. So if you wanted to expand as a running total, we need to go here. You write a comma, you write running total, no brackets, just spaces, no quotes either, just running total. And it equals an integer 64 type. And then we just close it. That's all you do. And by adding this little piece of code here, all of a sudden, you actually have it in the list. And the running total column appears in the list. 
Okay, so why did we go through all this pain? Well, our big problem was that our data types were removed. So let's say I remove everything except this one here, and I now expand. Well, let's have a look. We get all of our columns, but now it includes all of the data types that we need. Okay, so those were a few steps that we took. And this easily allows you to run your running total on different groups that you need. So that's great. But in the same way, you can actually run this on multiple groups. So now we only took the product called genes. But you might also go to a query like over here, which has both genes and color. And you can perform exactly the same steps. So in this case, maybe you want to say, I'm going to group it by multiple columns. I'm going to group it. I'm going to have the all rows operation called the tails. This creates our function again. And then out here again, you're going to write your FX running total. And now we're going to call it RT. And then our values column is called amount still. That's all we need. So this already creates us our RT column. And now we just need to add it here and say our RT column is an integer type. Great. And with this, it's going to group it on the level there. I'm going to remove everything else, expand the columns that we have. Ooh, it's a little bit big here. Okay. And now when you look at the running totals, you'll find that for jeans in yellow, we have a running total. That's the first one. Then for jeans in purple, there's another running total. So this actually allows you all the flexibility in the world. Do you want to categorize by a single category, two, three, four, five? If you want to categorize and do a running total by month, you can just have a month or year column and group it. Actually, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have created your running total query, uh, your running total function, and you know how to put it into the group by function here, you're going to have a performing one, you're going to have it on the level that you need, and your data types will remain. This is a little bit complex. I wrote a blog post where I write about everything and you can copy the code there or you can download the example file to work with as well. So if you haven't looked on that blog post yet, I'll write it in the description below. Um, and if this was any valuable or what is your favorite approach, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, ciao.